Let somebody shout hallelujah. If you know that your present condition will not end up becoming your conclusion tonight, can you rise to your feet? Move around. Rise to your feet. Move around and shout hallelujah. Shall we pray? You are Yahweh. Yeah, you are Yahweh. You are Yahweh. Yeah, Lord, you are Yahweh. Jesus, you are Yahweh. You are Yahweh. You are Yahweh. unshakable shaker we say thank you the unbeatable bitter the i am that i am the eagle himself not itself the one that fights a battle without losing in fact the one that appears without fighting and still won that they will celebrate you we worship you tonight thank you for what you are doing already thank you for what you are still going to do Daddy, please, in your mercy, accept our thanks and praise in the name of Jesus. Father, I come before you, Lord. I have not come here tonight to compete, but rather to learn at your feet and to tell the world about your goodness. Father, please reveal yourself tonight in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, because you have answered my prayer. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. Can you do something for Jesus quickly? Can you do something for Jesus quickly? I want to sincerely use this opportunity to appreciate our Father and our Mother and the Lord. Thank you so much for this privilege. We do not take this for granted. We are your children. We are your products. Can we celebrate Daddy and Mommy? Let's celebrate Daddy and Mommy. Thank you so much. And I want to appreciate all the senior pastors, our leaders, for raising us as young ones, we are grateful. Can you please celebrate all our fathers in faith and our mothers in faith? Thank you so much. And I appreciate all our leaders. Thank you so much. The Lord help us in the name of Jesus. Can we say louder? Amen. As we all know that our focus for tonight is on eagle's wings. And I want us to know that any time topic like this come forth, any time God is raising a matter like this to our Father in the Lord, it's not just a mere topic. It's not just a mere word. It's actually a word from the Father to our own Father in the house. That is why we are confident that this focus for tonight is not just a topic, but rather the mind of God for a season like this. If God is saying to our Father and the Lord that it is time for us to ride on the eagle's wings, it means that it is time for us to really ride. If you are one of those that is going to ride on the eagle's wing, wherever you are, can God hear your hallelujah? The topic before us still remains on eagle's wings. On eagle's wings. I'll quickly take my Bible reading from Revelation chapter 4, from verse 1 to 8. Revelation chapter 4, from verse 1 to 8. After this, I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up either, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. Verse 2. And immediately I was in the spirit. And behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. Verse 3. And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardin stone. And there was a rainbow round about the throne, in sight like unto an emerald. Verse 4. And round about the throne 
were four and twenty seats. And upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. Verse 5. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices, and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Verse 6. And the first beast was like a lion. Can somebody say one? Can we say one? And the second beast like a calf. Can somebody say two? And the third beast had a face as a man. Can somebody say three? And the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. Can somebody say four? Verse 8, which is the last verse. And the four beasts had each of them six wings about him. And they were filled with eyes within. And they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty, the one who was, is, and is to come. May the Lord bless the reading of his word and hearing in the name of Jesus. If we take a look at our Bible test, let me quickly do a little review. From verse 1 to 5. From verse 1 to 5. There is a man in this place called John. The book of Revelation, it was actually John speaking there. If you check verse 2, the scripture says that he was in the spirit. This particular John we are talking about, he was a man that was exiled. He was exiled. He was banished to the island of Patmos. The reason being for the sake of the gospel. He was banished. But verse 2 told us, yet this man was in the spirit. Yet, this man was still in alignment with the Holy Ghost. Yet, this man was still riding on the wings of the Father, not minding the challenges around, not minding the difficult situation, not minding the problem. He was still in the Spirit. And he said, I saw a throne in heaven. I saw a throne in heaven. He said, there's someone that sat on that throne. And he began to give out the description of God who sat on the throne. Told us the kind of look that our maker has. Showing us the beautification of God. Like an emerald, rainbow surrounding his throne. When you read further, he now said, around the throne of God. He said, we have another throne, which is 24 in number. 24 elders were sitting on that throne. And look at what they were saying day and night. We are still coming there. But the point I want us to see from that verse 1 to 5 is this. The verse 1 to 5 shows us the description of the beautification of God's glory. Not only that. And you know many of us believe that as a Christian, as saints, the only ministry we are entitled to is the ministry of angels. According to Hebrews chapter 1, 13 and 14. Hebrews 1, 13 and 14. I know the scripture says that Angels have been sent to minister to the saints. But I want to tell you from the scripture that we have seen in the book of Revelation chapter 4. The Bible says there are 24 thrones round about the throne of God. And it is the 24 elders that sat on that particular throne. And there is something unique about the 24 elders. They were not just elders, but they are also spirits in the realm of God. That God himself has sent together with angels to minister to the saints. Can somebody say Jesus? Can somebody shout Jesus? It is not just only the ministry of the angels that we are entitled to. In as much as you are born again. We are also entitled to the ministry of the 24 elders. They are also spirits that God himself created to minister unto us. When you read Revelation chapter 5 from verse 1 to end. Revelation chapter 5 from verse 1 to end. We are told that a time came that God that was seated on the throne was carrying a book. A book with many informations inside. Sealed with seven seals but no one to open that book. No one to look into what is inside of the book. And you see a mighty angel said in Revelation chapter 5 verse 2. Revelation chapter 5 verse 2. The mighty angel shouted. Angel. Mighty angel for that matter was shouting. He said and I saw. John said and I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice who is worthy to open the book and to lose the seeds thereof. 
Even angels, there are matters angels cannot address. Even angels, they are still in the dark concerning matters. But if you read on, the scripture says uh, there is an elder. One of the 24 elders showed up. Even when the mighty angels were confused, uh, elders were not confused. Uh, because all of their days, uh, all of their life uh, was rotating uh, around the throne of God. Uh, they had an understanding uh, of everything about God. What is confusing to angels is not confusing to the 24 elders. Only one out of the 24 elders showed up and said, I know you are a mighty angel. You may not understand this thing, but there is a man, there is a lamb, there is a lamb, there is a Jesus, there is a lamb, there is a lamb who was slain, there is a lamb who was slain that we have come to celebrate. There is a lamb who was slain. He is worthy. He is worthy. Can somebody shout, Jesus is worthy? One of the 24 elders said, look at, John the beloved, you might be confused. Mighty angel, with all your strength, you might be confused. But as an elder, our thrones are round about God. I have also been sent, although on earth, you people don't know that we elders too, we are part of your right in Christ. So let me give you a clarification of this matter. He says somebody has done the job, and it's Jesus. And the mighty angel was quiet because there was weeping in heaven and on earth. There were wailing, there were disturbance from dear rebout. But when the mighty elder, one of the elders out of 24, showed them and said, look at, this man has overcome. Can you face him and say, Jesus has overcome? Tell your neighbor, say, uh, the ministry angels are important. Tell your neighbor. You also have access to the 24 elders. Can somebody shout hallelujah? And when you look at from verse 6 to 8, verse 6 to 8, the scripture started giving us an illustration. It talked about the four living creatures. The four living creatures. Bible says one of them has the face of a lion. The second one has the face of a calf. The third one has the face of a man. And the fourth one has the face of a flying eagle. You see the living creatures. These are other spirits that God himself has designed to assist believers. To assist the saints. The four living creatures, they actually represent the glory dimension of God. The one that has to do with the lion. That carry the face of a lion. Actually focuses on the terrible side of God, the fiery side of God, the fury side of God, according to Revelation chapter 5, verse 5. Revelation 5, verse 5. The Bible talk about God as the lion of the tribe of Judah. As the lion of the tribe of Judah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And also the one that has the face of a man. The scripture told us. But before we go to that of a man, let's look at the calf side. When you read Matthew chapter 10, verse 16b. Matthew 10. Matthew 10, 16b. You will see what the scripture says in that place. The Bible says that, that we should be harmless as dove, but we should be wise as serpent. That one actually focuses on the gentle side of God. The other one, talk about the face of a man. The face of a man. When you read John chapter 1 verse 14, the Bible says God came in the flesh. God came as human to attend to human. And when you read on Hebrews chapter 13, Hebrews chapter 13, 1 and 2, the scripture says that we should love one another. Let's be kind one to the other. Reason be that at all aware some people have attended to angels. Angels can come in form of a man. Angels can come in form of a man. When you check Genesis chapter 17, Genesis chapter 18 rather, Genesis 18 rather from verse 1 to 10, Genesis 18, 1 to 10, Genesis 18, 1 to 10, you will see from the scripture, the Bible says to Abraham, three men walked around the plain of Mamre where Abraham was seated. Three of them, they were there. They were there, they were moving. They came, God showed up as a man. Do you see the face of God in line with a man? He showed up and he said, listen, Abraham, we have come from the throne of God to give you an announcement that your barrenness is about to end. Can I speak to somebody? Everything that is barren in your life, as you rise to your feet and shout a louder amen, an end come upon barrenness. I say an end come upon barrenness. And the last, the fourth creature, Bible talk about the fourth creature, living beasts. He said he has a face like that of an eagle. And remember, that's our focus for tonight. The face of an eagle. And I would quickly like to tell us some unique characteristics of an eagle. Unique features 
of an eagle's. There are many of them. But for the sake of time, I'll just focus on the eagle's wing. Although before them, we all know that eagles are known for their strengths as a large bird. They can pick up a prey that is three times their own weight. That's uniqueness of an eagle. Number two, they have powerful vision. They can sight prey from afar. Number three, they have muscular legs for grabbing their prey and maintaining balance on a tree. Number four, they have hooked beaks for ripping flesh from their prey. There are many characteristics, but permit me to quickly look at the eagle's wing now. Let's look at some of the uniqueness of the eagle's wings. The eagle's wings is the one that generates most of the lift to keep it in air like an aeroplane. When you see an eagle up there, far above the sea level or the ground level, it is actually the wing that is doing the job. That is one of the duties of the eagle's wing. Number two, the eagle's wings is the path for movement. Eagles move through the landscape primarily by soaring. Eagles move primarily by swarring. Swarring is actually a special type, a special type of flying. It's beyond the normal flying. In, at that level, when you look at an eagle, thank God we are in the season of the wind. The wind is blowing. Like our father brought information to us as his children. He said the wind is blowing. There's something peculiar about an eagle. When wind is blowing, eagles depend on the wind to fly. They follow the direction of the wind and they cooperate. They don't need to flap their wings at all. They they don't need to flap their wings. They save their wing. They stretch their wing forward like this without moving. As a result of that, that's why you see that eagles don't get tired. Face your neighbor. Say you will not be tired. I say tell your neighbor you will not be tired. Many things about the eagle. But because of that, let's look at quickly. Despite what the scripture says concerning an eagle, permit me to say to us that an eagle that you see is, with all of their uniqueness, they also have limitations. The reason being, so that we'll know that the eagle that we are focusing on tonight is not actually a thing, but a person. The eagle we are focusing on tonight, that we want to ride on, that we want to be on, is not a person. It's not a thing, rather, but a person. Look at some limitations. Eagles are diurnal birds. That is, they are more active in the morning and evening. But at night, they look for a comfortable place to rest. In fact, when you study, I took my time to study eagles. They sleep for 10 to 12 hours in a day. 10 to 12 hours, they enjoy. In fact, they rest with all of their strength. No wonder Psalm 121 verse 4. Psalm 121 verse 4. The psalmist was speaking. He said, I will lift up my eyes unto the ear from verse 1. Look at verse 1. He said, Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither sleep nor slumber. He that keepeth Israel neither sleep nor slumber. Do you see with me that the eagle we are dealing with is not actually a bed. It's not a thing. It's a person. Can you face your neighbor? Say, the eagle we are talking about is a person. He neither sleep, he neither slumber, he does not doze, but the normal eagle sleeps 20, in fact, for 12 hours, 10 to 12 hours, they are still sleeping. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Can somebody shout hallelujah? When you check Revelation chapter 4 verse 8b, Revelation 4 8b, the Bible says that the fourth living creature with the face of an eagle do not rest day or night. Do not rest day or night. And don't forget, the four living creatures represent the four dimensions of God's glory. God can come in like a lion in his fiery state. God can come like a calf as a humble personality. God can come as a man in disguise to humble us. God can come as an eagle. That is why I want us to build our focus around an eagle. And I see the Lord change his story tonight. I see people swearing tonight. I see somebody swearing tonight. We have looked at the uniqueness of an eagle. And we have seen their limitations. But quickly, permit me to say this to you. If God is raising a topic like this by our Father, that it is time for us to ride on eagle's wings, it means that it is time for us to be on motion. It is time for us to move beyond our current level. If you are somebody that will change position tonight, can you rest on your feet and begin to move around and say, I change position. I change position. I move into glory. I move into honor. Say, I change position. Can you do it prophetically? I change position. Amen. Hallelujah. Please be seated. God bless you. In the name of Jesus. 
Now quickly, because of time, we will look at the categories of motion or movement. There are several categories of motion or movement. I will just read it quickly. Categories of motion or movement. Number one, we have the total or complete stagnation. Total or complete stagnation. Mark 2, 1 to 12. Mark 2, 1 to 12. Bible talk about a paralytic man who has been paralyzed. In fact, he was carried by four men just to meet with Jesus. He was carried by four men just to meet with Jesus. The paralytic man. He was, that stage is a stage whereby there is no movement at all. Can I decree to somebody's life? Everything that is stagnant in your life, everything that is stagnant in your finance, in your business, in your career, in your destiny, I decree, begin to move now. We also have the crowning stage. We have the crowning stage. Number three, we have the leaping and walking stage. Act three, one to nine. Act three, one to nine. The leaping and walking. That's another category of motion. We know of the lame man. And number four, we have the running stage. We have the running stage. It's to make a steady progress. That's a kind of a movement. At least we are moving. Do you know? Let me quickly summarize the three points that I raised now. That has to do with the leaping, the running, and the flying. Can we quickly do a practical for the sake of time? Can we rise to our feet, everybody? Rise to your feet. If I ask you to begin to walk, can you just do a little movement? Can you move around? Can you just take a walk? Now, do you agree with me as you are walking? Listen attentively. If you agree with me, you will see that many people can walk. Many people can walk. But if I ask you to begin to run, what do you observe? Or I ask you to begin to run, can you begin to run? You will observe that there will be collision. There will be a problem when we get to a particular stage. But there is something about flying. There is something about flying. Can you fly? Can you fly? There are more space. There are more space. Can there are more space? See, let me tell you something. Listen attentively. I know my time is up. In the real sense, by the virtue of salvation, you and I, by the virtue of salvation, you are not just having two hands. It's a lie. From the realm of the spirit, where God dwells, we have wings. We do not just have hands. They can see you on earth and say that you only have hands. It's a lie. Salvation gives you a wings. In the real sense, as you begin to do the things of the spirit, one of the things that happen is that your wings in the realm of the spirit Spirits are activated and you begin to soar. Can you activate? Can you activate your wings? 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 Amen. Amen. Please, my, my, my time is up. Let me just summarize quickly. I would like to say this to every one of us as I bring this to conclusion. Practically speaking, I want to share a story with us. Because when we are talking about, because another category of movement is to be carried on eagle's wing. Is to be carried on eagle's wing. What does it mean to be carried on eagle's wings? What does it mean to be carried on eagle's wings? It means to be delivered. It means to be delivered. It means to be helped. Exodus 19, 3 to 4. Exodus 19, 3 to 4. Exodus 19, 3 to 4. The Bible says, God told Moses, he said, look at what I did to the Egyptians. How I carried you. And Moses went up unto God. And Lord God called unto him and said, he said, I bear you on eagle's wing and I brought you unto myself. Let me share this story with you quickly. I read of us about the story of a man, bro lucky by name. Bro lucky, that's why I'm confident. While I was meditating, meditating on this story and I had God tell me something is about to happen tonight. Look at what happened. He was about going to work. While he was going to work, see what happened. He was about going to work and the Lord told bro lucky. God said, bro lucky, listen, pray to pray. Begin to pray. You don't know what is about to happen. Just pray. So Brother Lucky was telling God. He said, God, my time is up. I need to go to work. God said, just pray. Then he started praying. After prayer, he left and he was moving out. He entered a taxi from Oshodi. When he entered the taxi, by the time Brother Lucky will find out, he met himself in a thick forest. A very thick and terrible forest. What he saw around the forest, they were fresh bodies. Fresh bodies that have been slaughtered. Breast, all sorts of sexual organs that have been slaughtered. Many things were on that place. And you know what happened? Bro Lucky started praying. He started praying aloud. And those people that were there, they said, shut up! Your, your tongues, your mouth is disturbing us. Then he kept quiet. And he started praying from within. He started praying from within. After praying from within, look at what that happens. They said, shut up! We can hear you. Praying from within. And you see what happened next. Let me tell you what happened next. Bro Lucky stopped. And he remembered the story of Esther. 
Can somebody pay attention? You remember a story when Esther faced the king. He said, If I perish, I perish. Can somebody say, If I perish, I perish? And he blasted in tongues and he started praying. And the wind blew, like our father has told us, a wind blew. When the wind blew, a hand carried the brother and he found himself at all a junction. And he found himself at all a junction. Can I speak into somebody that we echo a louder amen? Wherever you are, I don't know what has been kidnapped in your life. I don't know what has been kidnapped in your life. But I see God, I see God, I see God carrying the person back. In the name of Jesus, for you to write on the eagle's wing, very important, take notes. You must be born again. You must be saved. First Timothy 2, 14. You must be saved. You must be saved. You must be born again. Because very soon, our Father and the Lord will come up and begin to talk to us. If you are not born again, you have to run forward. Very important. Because your story is about to change. Except you are saved, you are not safe. And the last point is this. When you are, after being saved, it's very important that you begin to wait on God. Isaiah 40, 31. Isaiah 40, 31. The scripture says, But they that wait on the Lord, it shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings. Can somebody mount up with wings? Can can somebody mount up with wings? Can somebody mount up with wings? Can somebody mount up with wings? Can you mount up? Can you mount up? They will run and they will not be tired. They will walk. They will not be tired. Can I decree in the name of Jesus? Their grace to wait. Receive in the name of Jesus. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Come on, let's a living soul.